Hello, Roxana. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm well, thanks for asking. Uh, I think this is the first time I have you in my class. Yes, for yes. sure it is. Yeah. Are you a new student with Kalingo or have you yes. been here for a while? Yes, I logged today logged two days ago. Oh two days ago. Yeah. Nice. And how many classes have you had already? A lot of pronunciations classes. <laughs> oh, with uh, Miracle, yeah? Yes, like four. <laughs> nice. And two games with and Paul. Games. Pons. Paul. Paul yeah. Pons, okay. Nice. Excellent. Welcome to the club. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, do you want to tell me something about yourself? And then I'll introduce myself as well. So. Yes. Like where, you, where you're from and you know what do you do and so on, hobbies. I'm from Poland and I just graduated. Congratulations. I, thank you. That was hard <laughs> to do it. <laughs> to be on the last year. Oh. It's the laziest year of the study. Mm. <laughs> I bet you must be so happy and so relieved. Yes. This is finally over. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, and okay. um, I I just um, I'm just sitting at home now because I I, I, I like I graduated I also mm -hmm. worked before and I um, I stopped work because I don't want to, I didn't want to work anymore <laughs> because I work <laughs> during the studies so now I wow so you were studying vacation. and working at the same yeah. time. Exactly. So now I have, oh. I'm doing long vacation for me, and I want to improve oh. uh, my English. Mm. And I don't know. Okay. That's good. And so, if you don't mind me asking, what did you graduate as? I graduated tourism. Uh, okay. And also, I graduated physiotherapy and oh, I was nice. uh, uh, during my studies for three years I was teaching swimming I was a swimming instructor and I was teaching oh, kids nice. and adults and also babies <laughs> oh that's cool oh that's nice so you're, you're obviously in, into your sports yeah you like yes to keep uh, active yes that's good. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your, your lovely introduction. And um, we've got a couple more students that just uh, joined us. So so, hello, so so, and hello. Muhammad. Hello, hello guys. Salam alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. I'm very well. Thanks for asking. Nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you too. Um, Okay, I don't know if you if you have met uh, Roxana, but she's a new student. She just joined a couple of days ago. Um, I don't know if you caught any of her introduction, but she's uh, from Poland and she just graduated recently. So congrats to her. And, yeah, congratulations to uh, you. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. Um, yeah. yeah, she's she's teaching the swimming. Yes, that's so right. We, we, need, we need her to, to teach us, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, well, I, yeah. I don't know. Do you need any teaching, le uh, any, sorry, any swimming, <laughs> swimming lessons, Mohammed? <laughs> yeah, I know it, but little, you know, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Roxana, I think she said she's taught uh, children, adults, and even babies. So, um, uh, babies cool. from three months old. Really? Like, how oh. do you teach? How oh, do you that? Oh, that is that? special. That that that's our special uh, classes. I think with parents, mm -hmm. of course. The babies are with mother or father. Oh. Yeah. And then you'd like, you like, you know, playing in the water and adapt uh, to the water more than, of course, swimming, because that's so small. Children cannot swim. <laughs> but. They are good under the water, really. Like, I you can put them. Yeah. Yes, I heard it's very good and very healthy for the, you know, the toddlers, the babies to do that. 
um, you know, to get them into swimming into the pool at a very young yes. age. Yes. There are many benefits, yes. right? Yes, a lot of benefits. They like they like to be in water. I think. Mm. So, Roxana, I think it's three months is good for them to start with. Of course, I heard that in USA they started earlier than we, even uh, when the child is one month old. Wow. But we started with three months old because of some things, <laughs> like they need to, uh, con they had, they must to control their heads a little bit, you know, to yeah. keep them stronger. Because one more. F of I see. Cannot. I see. Uh, so at, at the age of one month, they are still very vulnerable yes. and um, um, fragile. So three months, their neck muscles maybe would have de developed yes. a little bit. Yeah. Yes, they started to control head. Head yeah. movement. Yeah. Yes. Ah, that's so interesting. Wow. Um, yeah, I've never actually done that with my son. I have a three and a half year old son now, and we've taken him to the pool, you know, uh, many times. But he never liked the water. <laughs> he was always holding on to me, you know, his mom, and uh, yes. he was a bit afraid. So, how do the babies react? Are they crying or are they happy with it? No, sometimes they cry, but it's really, really happened to me. I don't. I'm, I think twice. Normally, when the baby is so small and the, when it is, well, what I should the baby eat or he or she? <laughs> when it is with mother, she can hug the baby and then a little bit, you know, make. Um, I don't know, to make a large distance, like f make, yeah. um, you know, the distance will be keeping like, first of all, the distance is like without any distance because mother really? hug children, but then yes. a little bit you can, I don't know what to say. Yeah, a little bit more apart, yeah? Yes. So, and then the more, yeah. the, more the practice, and the, if the, the it, distance yeah. gets bigger, yeah. And then if the ch children, a child starts to scream or something, cry, then you mm -hmm. need to hack it. So they feel oh. the mother, so it's it's really... Make and the water possible. is uh, uh, warm, so they don't really feel you know, bad mm -hmm. in the water. Yes. Oh, that's really cool. Um, so you stop that. You're not doing that anymore, yeah? No, because... Uh, I the, there will be gonna be a change in my life so uh, for now yes. I stop. So you're gonna be probably yeah gonna be looking for different work maybe. Yeah. Yes, mm. exactly. Well, we wish you all the best in your future. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you find what you're after. Um, okay, so I'll briefly introduce myself. I don't know if you've watched any of my videos, but I'll just say something about myself and then uh, Soso and Muhammad can also say something about themselves so you can get to know them a bit. Um, so I'm Australian, um, but I'm currently living in, in the UK. I've been here for about a year and a half. And originally I'm from Bosnia. My parents are from there, uh, but most of my life I've spent in Australia. Um, I've also spent two years in Egypt uh, recently. I was teaching English there and I also studied there for a little bit. Then I spent some time in Germany, about five years when I was young. I went to school there, and um, yes, yeah, so I've been I've been around the world a fair bit, and um, so I enjoy studying languages, teaching languages, uh, history. I'm into history, technology, um, you know, computers, gadgets. I'm really into that, so I like to keep up to date with the latest things that are going on in technology, and uh, yeah, sport is one of my big hobbies as well. I mean, I played football or soccer for some time, and uh, so I'm still trying to play, or I do follow it quite a lot. And uh, yeah, so that's it. That's a yeah, bit about which, which country you did like more? And you really um, enjoy yourself here? Well, the, 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 three con the three countries where, uh, that are on four now, that I've spent a decent amount of time, time at, I mean, I've, 
my early uh, my early um, years were in in Bosnia, and uh, until the age of eight, I was there until the age of eight. So I don't remember much, but I really enjoyed it there. And it was just very nice. Uh, people are very friendly. But then I spent most of my life in Australia, and I can't really complain. Australia, it's it's great. You know, you have everything there. The only thing is that it's so far away from all the other countries from uh, yes. you know from Europe and uh, the closest is Malaysia you know Indonesia and uh, if you go further north you have Japan and northern Korea but uh, there's no other English speaking country really nearby it's the only country there and we're so far from all the other uh, countries so we'll have to fly if you wanted to go somewhere that was the biggest disadvantage and sometimes we felt like we were a bit behind when it came to technology or something like that uh, but other than that, I really loved it. I like Australia. You know, I like Germany as well. Germany had its positives. Um, you know, very multicultural there as well, and um, the school system there was really difficult. <laughs> I realized that when I was studying there. Yeah. Uh, a lot more difficult than Australia. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I can't really say I have a favorite. I mean, I have I have good. Memories in all countries. Yeah, in Australia, you've been sit, uh, living in Sydney or or another. No, in, uh, Perth, Perth, Western Australia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, Perth. Yeah, so I have fond memories everywhere. Very good. But anyways, enough of me. So, um, Muhammad, tell us something about yourself briefly. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, Roxana, she heard me before. All right. <laughs> oh, did yeah. So you met before? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I told her I'm from Saudi Arabia, from Jeddah. I have oh. um, uh, my wife and three, uh, I mean, a son and two daughters. Mm -hmm. and I've been working for Saudi Airline for a while. I mean, I spent the whole life in Saudi Airline. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, as you are uh, like uh, that uh, soccer, I like the football game to watch. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I, when I watch my uh, favorite club, I do like my wife to talk to me because I get nervous, <laughs> especially <laughs> if they are losing. <laughs> but uh -oh. if they are, uh, if they are, <laughs> if they are winning, okay, no problem. You know, I'll be yes. happy. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> so, so. <laughs> cool, yeah, that's, yeah, this is. Uh, I'm living in Jeddah most of the since uh, 30, 35 years. Mm. Okay, okay, that's good. Thank you very much, Muhammad. And uh, so so. Yes. Tell us my about yourself. Okay, my name is Susan Sharif from Saudi Arabia. I was born and raised all my life here. Uh, let's say I'm 27 years old and I work as a teaching assistant. And what else? What else? Yes, and nowadays I'm a huge, huge fan of Korean culture, Korean pop, Korean drama, everything Korean. Mm. I had an uh, Egyptian. Um, a teacher of Arabic in Egypt, he was also into Korean culture and he was studying the language and I think he's been there even, he traveled there and he t intended back then to travel to Korea to um, teach um, English there. So yeah, it's, um, it's a very fascinating culture so I'm, I'm not surprised that you know, there are others out there that love the culture. So since when have you been really interested in the Korean? Let's see, it's in two so after high school, yeah, after I graduated in 2006. Oh, I oh. see. So quite a while then. Seven years. Yeah. So I get, yeah, I guess you plan to visit South Korea sometimes. Yes. Right? After I get my MA degree, I will mm. fly to Korea. That's excellent. So you can speak Korean well? Not that much. I know some words. Mm -hmm. But not mm -hmm. that well. Oh, so you, you plan to go there, yeah? You plan to visit there sometime? Yeah, someday. Inshallah. Well, we wish you all the best in your, um, in your future and your um, ventures. 
Um, thank you to all for your brief introductions, guys. Uh, I think we'll get started. So this is a um, or an, in, an intermediate level. OK. So Roxana, I don't know if, if you are aware, but um, now since you joined, actually, uh, we have um, the leveling system or format is that we have four main levels, OK? So level 100 and 200, and then 300 and 400. OK, the first one, 100 is the high beginner level. Then the, sec the 200 is uh, intermediate, which is this one here that we're doing right now. And then 300, uh, which is high intermediate, and then the highest level is the 400 or advanced level. Now, in the first two, we are always going to focus more on grammar. And um, in the, the higher two levels, we will focus more on discussion. So, I mean, in every lesson, we will have an article. Yeah? But in the higher two levels, we're going to we're going to focus more on the discussion about this article or anything related to that. Yeah. Um, so just to let you know, it actually okay. creates it creates um, you know a more better environment for the students so that they can choose whether they would want to be in a, a beginner's class or a, an advanced class. And uh, hopefully, what Colingo is aiming to do is to have uh, simultaneously, during the same hour, a lower class and a higher class. So, for example, now uh, there should be another class running at the same time uh, with a higher level. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the plan. This is the goal. I don't know if there is one right now, but this is the ultimate goal. Yeah. So it gives the students uh, an option, uh, so that they don't have to be stuck in an advanced class if they are a beginner. They are a beginner, and then they feel uncomfortable. Yeah, so this is the one thing I wanted to mention. So, so I think you're aware of this already, yeah? Yes. Okay, good. All right, guys. So let's start. So, like I said, grammar. We're going to focus on mainly before we get into the article. And um, this lesson's grammar is phrasal verbs. So the grammar skill uh, is phrasal verbs. And can you tell me? Um, you know when a, a match or a game is is cancelled? Let's say a football match is cancelled. Can you think of another word or combination of words to use instead of cancelled? Called off. Yes, well done, so so. Called off. So this is a phrasal verb. Yeah? Um, so let me get into the grammar. Since you got that, you hit uh, the nail nail on its head, so so. Uh, we'll get straight into it. I'm going to screen share the grammar so you can see. And uh, we can all <clears throat> move on as a team. So, firstly, um, we can use phrasal verbs uh, to express an action or idea as an alternative to its more academic equivalent. So it's it's a multi multi word verb phrase. Okay. Uh, okay, we have another student has joined. Koro. Hello, Koro. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, we've just started the grammar uh, and it's phrasal verbs. So you came right on time. Okay. <laughs> okay. So just to let you know, I'm going to go through the grammar and then we'll discuss it and practice a little bit. Okay. So construction. The way we construct, uh, you know, this would be by having the verb plus the preposition, also called part uh, particle. So call off. Yeah. To cancel. Call the verb and particle of or preposition. So to call off something means to cancel. Then another would be uh, to discover something means to find out. I'm sure we've used this uh, in our in our vocabulary or in our conversations. Um, I'd like to find out who did this to you. Yeah. I'd like to discover. Then to select or choose something, pick out. 
Yeah? Pick out the best fruit from this basket. Or pick out your favorite fruit from the basket, for example. Then we have to try out, which means to test. Yeah? Uh, to give up or to surrender. Yeah? To give up, uh, you can say. To quit. Uh, yeah, to quit. Exactly. You're quitting something, you're surrendering. Uh, it depends what context, you know. For example, maybe a soldier might say to another soldier, surrender or give up. Uh, give up your guns or your arms or whatever. Uh, but you're also, it can be used that, oh, I had enough, I give up. I can't do this anymore. It's too difficult, you know, this um, exercise or whatever. So you're quitting the exercise, yeah? Then we have to invent, uh, which is to come up with. So here we have about three words. To come up with, yeah? Come up with something means to invent or think of something. Yesterday I came up with a great idea. Yeah? So these are some examples. Now the best way to learn them is in context. Like I mentioned, context is important. So you need to first of all understand the context of um, and the meaning, what you're trying to say. Yeah? And I can't stress enough how important it is to have a good vocabulary of phrasal verbs. So the more you know, the better your speech will be. The better you will be able to com communicate, your language skills will, will improve. And I'm sure you will he hear many uh, phrasal verbs in, in, in um, I don't know, during the news maybe, or some programs, or in, when natives speak, speak and have conversations. We use them a lot. Okay? And keep in mind that the meaning can change depending on what they are used. On how they use, sorry. So sometimes you can change the context. Yeah. Uh, I think we have another student. Arabi, hello. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Welcome to the class. Thank you. I'm doing good, well. thank you. Nice. Okay, look, we, we're just going through the grammar uh, of yes. fra phrasal uh, verbs. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to read them out to you, give you some examples and uh, tell you what it's all about and then hopefully we'll practice a little bit yeah and um, so we'll keep going so let's have a look at some yes, yes? can you maximize the font uh, oh yes okay oh, is that better yes okay so let's see this first sentence actually uh, Koro do you mind reading this for us please uh, the meeting was called off because not. Oh, sorry. I can. Uh, yes. The, the meeting was called off because not everyone will be able to attend. Good. Yes. So the meeting was called off because not everyone will be able to attend. Excellent. Uh, Muhammad, can you read the second sentence, please? Yeah. Please find out who can attend the next meeting. Excellent. Please find out who can attend the next meeting. Lovely. And uh, Orabi, can you read the third sentence, please? Yes. At the meeting, we need to pick out the best design proposal for our marketing campaign. Excellent. Good reading. So at the meeting, we need to pick out the best design proposal for our marketing campaign. And uh, Roxana, can you read the next one, please? Once we do that, we will try out the design to pick out on the on a test website. Good. So once we do that, we will try out the design picked out on a test website. So here we have two. Yeah, try out the design that we've picked out on a test website. Okay, and uh, so so, the next one. But if the website has bugs or it doesn't look right, we shouldn't give up. Yes, 
Excellent. So, but if the website has bugs or doesn't look right, we shouldn't give up. Right, so now, and the last one is, we can always come up with something better. So what's the meaning of give up here? Quit. Yes. Good. So we shouldn't quit. Quit, yeah? Keep going. Yeah. Excellent. Come up with? We can always come up with something better. Uh, invent. Yes, well done. Invent. Good memory. Invent. Invent something, yeah? Yeah. Think of something new, yeah? Okay, picked out. Chosen? Yes. Yep. That's correct. That's it. Chosen. Try out. Uh, test. Yes, test. So we will test the design. Excellent. And what about uh, pick out? Choose. 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 Yes. Yes, exactly. Just like the other one. Only this isn't fast. Yeah, so we need to choose. Yeah. We need to choose the best design proposal or select. Find out. Find out for me that's we look for something, you know. We could mm -hmm. say look for something. Or find out search Change. for me. Search. 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 Yeah. I think it's search. Mm. Figure out. Sorry, it's also? Figure out. Yeah, figure out is close. See, search is similar, but there's a better word. Better Still. word. Yes. Well done. Orabi, did you say that? Yeah? Yes. Discover. Yeah. Please discover. Yes. Who can attend discover. the next meeting? Yes. Discover. Discover. Search and look for is probably more similar to each other. This is close, but they're cousins, but they're not brothers or sisters, yeah? <laughs> okay? So they're close, but they're not very close. And then we have called off. Cancel. 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 Cancel the, that game. Excellent. Just like we cancelled the match before, yeah? So the meeting was cancelled or called off. Well done, guys. Good. So let's keep moving. Secondly, you can use phrasal verbs in different verb tenses. To do so, you need to properly conjugate the verb part of the phrasal verb. Close off. Okay, so we have here simple present. Okay. So he, okay, let's get Koro to read. First one, please. Uh, he sometimes calls of the meeting when we have few participants. Well done. So here in the simple present, we've added an S. You have to call. So he sometimes calls off the meeting when we have few participants. Calls because he is third person. Right. Then the next example would be in present continuous. Mm -hmm. Muhammad? I'm calling off the meeting now. Yeah. So here we're using ING. So I'm calling off the meeting now. Excellent. Then we have simple past. Orabi? Yes. I called off the meeting yesterday. Yeah. Nice and simple in the past. So we add ED. I called off the meeting yesterday. Simple future. Roxana. She will call off the meeting tomorrow morning. Yes, good. She will call off the meeting tomorrow morning. So we just throw in will to represent the future. Well done. And then present perfect. So so. I've called off the meeting many times before. Yeah. 
I have called off, or I've called off the meeting many times before. She's tough. Yeah, she's a tough. <laughs> she's a tough cook, cookie. She's a tough cookie. She doesn't care. <laughs> Excellent. And then the last would be past perfect. Yeah. So they had called off the meeting before you arrived. So two things were happening here. Meeting was called off before you arrived. So they had called off the meeting before you arrived. Okay, so we can put uh, or use phrasal verbs in, in various tenses. Okay. Um, they had called off. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, let's keep moving. Third, there are times that you put the object of the phrasal verbs between the verb and the particle. Mm. So normal use, we would say, I called off the meeting. And the alternative use would be, I called the meeting off. So you can say this as well. So both are fine. They have the same meaning, same context. So I called off the meeting or I called the meeting off. Mm -hmm. And you can do this with the noun in the object, uh, the meeting, in our example, receives the action of the phrasal verb. So this is the thing to keep in mind. All right. So not all phrasal verbs have an object. So you could say, I'll find out. Or whatever you do, don't give up. So you don't always have to have an object in here. All right, so, okay, who can give me an example? Or let's say you guys give me an example each if you can. Think of a, a, a sentence with a phrasal verb. So let's say, okay, I'm going to go up and give you the example. So here. Or if you know of any other ones, it would be good as well. Who wants to start? Okay, me. Uh, I get on well with everybody. I get on well with everybody. Ah. Are we happy with um, Orabi's sentence? Yes. Yeah, excellent. So what's the what's the phrase of verb here, Soso? Get along with. Yeah. Yeah, get on well. You can say get on well. Yeah, excellent. Good sentence, Robbie. Well done. Okay, any others? Okay. I I looked over my plans for the weekend. Mm -hmm. So the phrasal verb is? Uh, look over. Yes, excellent. Good sentence, yeah. I looked over my plans for the weekend. Lovely, OK. Anyone else? Can, can it be, for example, I came up with Colingo because I wanted to start learning English. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, <laughs> came up, came up with Colingo, or maybe I came across Colingo. Mm. Yeah, you can say it came across, Colingo, can't you? Because you sort of um, you found out about it, yeah? Is that what you want to say? Or yes, am I, am I, I think it so. Wrong? Yeah, so you, maybe if your context wants, uh, is, is um, um, you ran into Colingo while, search, while surfing the web. So you mm -hmm. came, while surfing the web, I came across Colingo. Okay. Yeah? Yes. This would be a good one. Nice. Any others? Muhammad? Is 
Can you think of one? No. Are you there? Hello? Hello? Yes, I'm coming. Yes, 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 I can, yes. I can hear you. Uh, for give up, uh, I could say I I never give up uh, playing football. Could I? Um, yes, yes, you can say that. Um, or when I when I play football, I never give up. Yeah, when I play football, I, I think never. This is what you want to say, yeah. When I play football, I never give up. I'm always determined to you know score a goal or defend. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Okay. All right then. Koro, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I am trying. Oh, <laughs> so your, your computer is giving you a hard time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the sentence? Yeah, I have just, to read. Yeah, just give me, uh, make up a sentence using one of the you know, phrasal verbs. Mm. Or even if you know any other phrasal verb, it's also good. I am coming up with my computer. No, 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 no. I have to call off the class because my computer didn't work out. Yeah, so turn off, yeah, would be the first Turn off, way. yes. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have to turn off my computer because it's giving me a hard time. It's play, maybe playing up. Ah, you can say playing up. It's playing okay, up. Okay. Yeah, that's another one. Okay. Excellent. All right, guys. So, are there any questions so far with this grammar skill? No. Okie dokie. If you have happy, I'm happy. <laughs> yes. Ah, yeah, you haven't heard that for a while. The honky dokie yes. teacher. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's let's get into the article then. I'm going to read this article to you. Hopefully, we can all benefit. Um, we're all fitness junkies, aren't we? <laughs> so we're talking about uh, the benefits of using cardio equipment, right? So um, I'm going to try and make it a bit bigger. I know maybe Orabi. <laughs> cannot, cannot see it. Maybe Arabi and Muhammad also. <laughs> and everyone else. But look. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, I can't make it any bigger because then I have to keep scrolling left and right, left and right. So what I'll do usually, i put the link in the chat, in the Colingo chat, so you can open it in your own window. All right? Yeah. And then I think it's easier for you to see. And uh, yeah, just follow from there. Okay, guys? So let's do this. So, um, cardio equipment or cardio workout plays a very important and vital role for fitness which helps to increase your health. Cardio equipment or exercise bikes uh, which can be used inside the home or in, in gym centers, uh, cardio equipment or fitness exercise bikes, exercise bikes basically used to maintain uh, your health or their health and stay in physically or in physical fitness, I think there's a few mistakes here, and in shape, or rather to stay physically fit. You, you, I would take this out. So there's a few errors here. So if you pick up some errors, tell me, yeah? Uh, there's a few typos here. All right, recumbent bikes are more extremely pop, uh, popular because which provide, or uh, they provide you with a cardio workout exercise and burn out more calories and fat in less time and even uh, help you to strengthen the heart and keep both lungs and heart in shape. Okay. It also helps to boost the energy by practicing regular exercise. One cardio machine uh, to use is a treadmill. I'm sure you guys have heard of a treadmill. Do you know what a treadmill is? No. Who knows what's a treadmill? No, oh, you know, I know, no, no treadmill, no. Treadmill. You know the machine where you, you can walk and run on? Oh yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. that's a treadmill. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so cardio machines are the perfect exercise equipment uh, to use when working out. Treadmills and exercise bikes are all well and good. Okay, there are other pieces of cardio equipment that are, or other types of cardio equipment that are a lot smaller and still do the same work, same workout on the body. Uh, cardio exercise equipment take a very small space, but they take up. So here you could use a um, phrasal verb. They take up a very small space, mm -hmm. or very little space. Um, in both side up ball, which also help you to practice um, exercise in an easy way. Uh, B S O U. Um, I don't know what that is. What is that supposed to mean? Anyways, um, so this equipment or this equipment cost is very reasonable and affordable. Uh, a rowing machine will also help to perform exercise with upper body and keep you toned. Do you know what this means to keep you toned? Toned, good fit or a good shape. I mean, a figure, good figure. Yeah, yeah, it's a good toned, nice figure. Um, so like almost like a strong figure, not necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what's the opposite of toned. Jelly, no. But anyway, so tone means having a good shape, good figure, and toned muscles. Yeah. So in such a busy schedule, life common. Um, uh, okay, men are not getting enough time to involve with daily exercise. So men and women, I guess. Nowadays, this should be spelled together. Uh, every common man. Uh, is involved with modern technology such as cars and various types of transportation. As a result, they are not exercising in a proper way, and for this, it's declining the health upright bicycle exercise and equipments where you can place in any of the cornering. Okay, it's getting a bit out of the structure, isn't it? Right. But, anyways, they're trying to say here is that, you know, men and women. Have a busy life, uh, busy life, busy, busy schedule, so they don't get to work out much because they are using cars, all sorts of public transportation. So what happens? Where do you get? When do you get to work out or do any form of activity? So they're saying uh, using these cardio equipment is very uh, handy, and you can fold them away and, and whatnot and put them under the bed. Some of these, or even up against the wall in the corner of the room. Yeah. So, in a very small space, uh, it can be suitable, f suitable uh, in any any room, and uh, then ride the bike at least half an hour every day, which provides you outstanding results. So basically, if you do this on a on a regular basis, at least half an hour or up to half an hour a day, that's plenty for you to see some results and to remain fit. Or even get fitter. So the benefits of cardiovascular exercise cannot be overstated. Uh, by performing cardio exercise on a regular basis, your body gains stamina and endurance and becomes more efficient at burning calories. That's very true. Another benefit is a more efficient metabolism and a strengthening and the strengthening of the immune system. Cardiovascular exercise can also reduce stress. And improve self-esteem. Uh, for keeping healthy uh, and fitness uh, requires professional personal trainer. Always recommended uh, tools like rehab re rehabilitation equipment, uh, high-speed isokinetic uh, equipment, ankle re rehab rehabilitation equipment, commercial cardio equipment, ankle strength testing equipment. Power and speed training equipment, uh, back rehabilitation equipment, shoulder rehab equipment, and so on. Basically, a lot of this um, equipment, and you can find it in the gym. So I don't think you should be buying all of this. So basically, when you go to the gym, make sure you use a lot of these 
um, you know, cardio machines you know, to work on your your cardiovascular, uh, you know, and what else are they saying here? And your immune system and everything else. Uh, so it's very important. These are very important devices because uh, they are devices used during physical activity, like to enhance the strength or conditioning effects of that exercise by providing either fixed or adjustable amounts of resistance, or to other otherwise enhance the experience or outcome of an exercise routine. So you basically, you can adjust. Uh, the resistance. So you know when you're on the treadmill and you're walking or running on the treadmill, you can adjust the height. So as if you're walking or running up the hill. Yeah. So that's what they're saying, and uh, which is a good thing to have. Yeah, you can challenge yourself. Um, so yeah, that's it pretty much. Uh, so one thing, uh, main thing to take away from this is. If you're not going to the gym, um, or if you're not, it's fine as well. But if you are, try to use these cardio equipments, um, like a treadmill, uh, the bike which you sit on, you cycle on, uh, the rowing machine. There's a one machine called the rowing. It's like you know, a little uh, boat, and you're moving your arms. I can't demonstrate it to you. And back and forth. And that's also very good. It's all got to do with the heart. Um, anyway, so are there any questions about this so far? No, no questions. No, any vocabulary which? It's a lot of vocabulary, but it is, yeah. Yes, yes. Is there one which you didn't know? Or you want me to explain? We can no, but um, more or less it is to understand, but it's a mm. lot of vocabulary. Mm, yeah, it is. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, I want uh, stamina and endurance. Endurance. What means endurance? Endurance. Okay, who knows what endurance means? Who wants to try explain it to our um, Anyone? Which word? Sorry. Endurance. Endurance. Where is this that, 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 which, uh, which paragraph? Sorry. Endurance. Endurance. That's mean he can resist. He can. Uh, he can. Uh, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. take more. Yani he can resist more effort. Effort yeah. to, to do so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you know, when you're let's say running, you're doing a uh, long distance running, you will have. You, sh you must have endurance to be able to yeah. run for a long distance. Yeah. Yeah. So the ability to endure. He, he, he can do that, you know. He can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No exactly. problem there. Yeah. But because uh, the people, the uh, it's different from one to one. You know, one yeah. guy he can run for for one hour, and the other exactly. guy he cannot do it. He can run for half an hour. So it mm -hmm. depends on the guy. He ha ha Yani, if ca he can resist, you know that uh, one hour running. So, تحمل يعني بالعربي. قدرة التحمل. Excellent. Yeah, that's good. Very good explanation. Yeah. And what about stamina? Stamina. Where is that word? I look at it. I, maybe I can. Stamina is pretty much the same thing. As endurance, endurance, stamina uh, go. They go hand in hand. Right? Go, they go together. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So stamina is also got to do with prolonged physical or even mental effort. So something which you're doing over a long period, you have to have stamina. You know, these football players, these soccer players, they have stamina and endurance because they can run for a long time. Yeah. You know. So they have to have stamina and endurance if they want to last 90 minutes or full match. If you don't have stamina and endurance, you might play for maybe 30 minutes and then that's it, you puffed out. <laughs> you yeah. finished. So yeah, professional athletes usually have very good stamina and um, endurance. Okay, uh, Oravi? 
Is that making it any clearer? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, guys, well, let me see. Okay, if there are no other questions, then... Um, I'll quickly go through some questions and ask you. So I want some, um, you know, answers from you. But try to use, you know, phrasal verbs. Okay. It is uh, not so easy to use the paraphrase uh, verbs. It's the most complicated thing in the English is a language. Yeah, yeah. This is what I was saying at the beginning before you joined. It's, uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't stress Sorry. it enough. It's, it's really, really important. That's okay. Uh, to to learn as many phrasal verbs as you can because that will really improve your speaking, hmm. and your understanding. Because sometimes. You might not understand what they're saying, and then if you literally translate it, translate it into Spanish or in your native uh, language, mm -hmm. then you're gonna say, "What's what's he trying to say with that?" But yeah. if you know, if you know the phrasal verbs, then you will straight away catch on. Ah, okay. Uh, for example, yeah. if someone says, "Uh, we need to catch up," mm. so if you literally translate it, "catch," "catch up." So you're looking in the sky. Okay, well, what's up there? What am I going to catch? <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> yes. So if someone is a beginner and doesn't know what catch up means, you know, they're totally going to misunderstand them. Or even catch up, you know, the tomato sauce. <laughs> the ketchup? Who's having <laughs> yeah. Are we having steak? Are we having barbecue? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's very important, you know, to understand these uh, phrasal verbs. So, if you go on Google, just um, uh, Google um, English phra phrasal verbs, you'll see a whole list. And just practice. Let me learn about five, if you can, a day. And the meaning, yeah? The meaning is very important, and how to use it in the right context. I think that will really improve your, your English. I think this is the biggest tip I can give you today. All right. So, anyways, um, quickly, let me ask you some questions about this. Um, okay. What about this one? Okay. So, the chat. What do we need to eat less of? So, what do we need to eat less of when having a healthy lifestyle? So now you have to think of, okay, <laughs> what phrasal verb can I use for this? Um, then, uh, shut down. Ah, someone says uh, pizza. Someone says pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the, the, the fatty things, you know. Like yes, it excellent. has uh, too much oil and like this, you know. Mm. Junk food. Stay yeah, away junk from food. McDonald's mm. and, and you're McDonald's, right. Yeah? Too much cholesterol. Excellent. And or Orabi said the the perfect uh, phrasal verb. What was it again? To cut down eating yeah. sugars. To cut down. You have to cut down. Yes. Cut down on sugar, fatty things and all that. Perfect. Montez. Next. Okay, I'll give you another one. Quickly, and then I'll just briefly test you guys. Um, what would we do? All right, here's one more, a brief one. Uh, what would you do or say to a friend who is having a bad day? You, you can say for him, come on, man, you take it easy. Yes, take it easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else? Um, Chill out. Ah, excellent. Chill out, man. You're, you're, too, you're too stressed. Don't worry about it. Yeah, chill out. Excellent. Yeah, chill out. Is there any others you can think of? Are there any others you can think of? 
Calm down. Yes, excellent. Calm, calm down. down. Yes, yes. Yes. Take it easy. Take it easy. Calm down. Things are going <laughs> to be all right, you know. Yeah. Calm down. It's not the end of the world, you know. You yeah. still have a roof over your head. You have food. You, know, you have a job. Why are you worried? <laughs> You're still alive. <laughs> You're still alive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. And you just say, you know, calm down. It's going to be all right. Take it easy. Chill out. Mm. Or nothing happened, you know. Mm. Yeah. So there are maybe a few other ones we can use also. All right, guys. So we're coming close to the end now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to. Um, Um, let me give you. Actually, can you give me a sentence and give me another sentence and use another phrasal verb before I let you go? So, so so. Let's start with so so. Can you give me a phrasal verb, a sentence with a phrasal verb? Preferably not the same one you gave me earlier. Okay. <laughs> I ran into my professor last week. Yes. So which one is a phrasal verb? Run into. Excellent. I ran into my uh, professor. Basically, you know, um, yeah, you, you saw him, you ran into him. Not physically or not literally, you ran into him. Yeah. Excellent. Well done. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. Ro Roxana, can you give us another one? Yes, for example, I. I have to switch off my computer because it doesn't work well. Yeah, I have to switch off my computer because it doesn't work well. So switch off. Yeah. Can you say also tur turn off as well? Can you say turn off? Turn off. Yeah, well? you can say turn off. I need to turn off or switch off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess. Okay. A guest. <laughs> yeah, we have a guest. Daniel. Is it Hello. a <laughs> Big, big Hello. brother is watching us. <laughs> nice to see you. I don't know if you can, you can hear us or not. Well, let me, let's finish it quickly. Orabi, can you give me a, a sentence, please, as well? Uh, I'm looking for a, a job. Yeah, so here, looking for, yeah? Looking for excellent and using the continuous. Well done, um, Hamed. I'm trying to overcome my problem. Is it uh, correct? Mm. Overcome. Overcome. What do you think, guys? Maybe it's not. <laughs> have an app. Um, overcome. I think overcome would be. Uh, mm. Yeah, maybe well, it's, it's uh, one word. It's one word. See? Oh, okay, I change it. Uh, I'm looking for uh, uh, an ex-wife <laughs> or a beautiful girl. I'm I'm looking for okay, good. A beautiful wife. Another right. beautiful wife. Yeah, that's. Okay, yeah, that's all right. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay, Mohammed, thank you. <laughs> and Koro, Koro, you give us one. Uh, uh, I have to call off to my meeting because I have to go to shopping new clothes. <laughs> oh, oh. Man, so lucky you! <laughs> I am rich. <laughs> you are rich. <laughs> well, imagine a boss calling off a meeting because they want to go shopping. There's a big sale on, uh, in, I don't know, in Gucci. <laughs> Oh, in yeah. Prada, in Prada shop. Oh, it's half Prada. Prada. Oh, I go. <laughs> no, in Prada, no. <laughs> Excellent, good one. Yes, I have to call off the meeting. Uh, cancel oh, okay. it because there's a big sale at Prada. Bye. Mm, bye. Yeah, I'll see you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I really uh, do enjoy it with you. Lovely, yeah. awesome. Okay, guys, nice yeah. to see you again. Okay, care, yeah? thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Masalama.